I'm Joseph Coco with Nata Soup. Keep on trucking, the art process blog. I am here at Mocha Fest 2013, and if you could introduce yourself. Hi, I'm David Quinn. I wrote uh, Faust and The Littlest Pitch. Okay, and what's bringing you to Mocha Fest this year? Um, I've been here, I guess, three years in a row. Um, and this is a special year because in addition to The, the Littlest Pitch, my Not For Children children's book, which you'll see in a minute, I'm also uh, showing off um, the entire run of the Faust Love of the Dam story. I see that. It's, it's quite a spread on the table here. Are you uh, getting some positive feedback from, from fans? Is this your first year at MoCA? No, it's my third year. Okay. Um, <laughs> This, uh, the Littlest Bitch book actually made its debut here a couple years ago, and I, it's, it's kind of a perennial seller at this show. There's, there's a real appreciation among this eclectic and interesting and educated crowd to, uh, to understand the appeal of a book that looks like a children's book but is actually for adults. If you're, if you're wherever a fan of Mad Magazine or Edward Gorey or the book Eloise by Kay Parker, then you kind of know what I mean. Or Kay Thompson, I guess her name was. Aww. I love you, honey. You gotta stick with mommy. Where's mommy? <laughs> okay, and we're together. All right. Would you say that uh, those are some of your inspirations for writing the book? Oh, absolutely. And I'm glad my family's joining me today. Yesterday, I was joined also by uh, the illustrator of this project, which is called Huge. That is the story of uh, two sisters who uh, love what they do, and what they do is uh, contract killing. So we're working on that, and we're actually going to start that as an online, illustrated, uh, interactive novel with links to music, links to maps, links to I know, things in the story. Uh, and hopefully also develop it for other media, including traditional print. I have a long history in, in print comics, working work for hire for the superhero companies in the 90s, like Marvel and DC and Image, okay. and uh, focusing these days entirely on work that I own or co-own with my illustrators, um, which is really, I think, the way to go in a transmedia world. So you would say that, that the sort of new age medium of releasing uh, comics in, in a digital form is what drew you away from the superhero industry? No, um, I don't know how familiar you are, you are with the history of the superhero industry in the 90s, but um, there was a period when there was about 100 writers who could make a decent living, um, and I'm talking like six-figure salary, writing comic book scripts for Marvel in DC. That number is unfortunately now in this age of dwindling print and, and uh, a distribution system that kind of uh, committed suicide in the 90s. Um, that, that number is probably down to a dozen. So I, I started a marketing company to do uh, that as my major um, income job, and I, and I retained creator-owned publishing and creator-owned content creation um, as, as my you know, love job. Yeah, it, it's really great to hear that just because, you know, your particular niche for medium is is kind of um, becoming less popular or going through changes, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily having to quit work or pick up something outside of, of the realm of what you do. Uh, so it's also funny to hear that you're, you're saying there's just not as much space in the superhero industry anymore, because I think a lot of people think of indie comics as being, you know, very hard to, to make a living at, essentially, and you're saying almost the opposite. It's getting harder to make a living at, in the superhero industry. Well, it was for me. I mean, maybe at my maybe my writing was just a little bit too eclectic. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff online about um, a few diehard fans for my Doctor Strange, um, but I wasn't ever, you know, the person that they'd come to to write to write that third X-Men book or something like that. So maybe I wasn't, you know, just had a different kind of voice and a different kind of content. And, uh, you know, I've been doing this for 25 years, so I sort of, I am myself, and I, and I don't try to be what I'm not. I just do what I do. Okay. Are you finding that uh, some of your fans from your more superhero days have kind of followed you through into the, into the indie industry, or 
uh, is it just uh, you, you're you're essentially starting from scratch and, and uh, or obviously you've you've made serious progress. Uh, I'm saying, where are you starting from scratch and had to actually build your presence in, in the industry world? As that's well? that's a great question, but I think the answer honestly is both. I see a lot of people that followed me from the Doctor Strange days. And I also have a lot of people that have been alternative and independent and sort of, you know, raw black and white uh, adult comics from the start, you know, th those groups that, that appreciate Faust. And how did your process change? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll stop asking questions about no, moving between fine. the industry soon. But how did your process change in between the two? Did you find that, uh, obviously you said you were you were working in superheroes in the 90s, um, so there probably wasn't too much digital work going on then. But did you find that you moved to more traditional mediums when becoming an independent developer? Or, or did you basically just switch the mediums and now you own the work and your boss is different? Uh, <laughs> um, I think the process is the same, but the distribution has changed. I, I built a Facebook pages for the Romeros, my zombie punk project, a uh, Facebook page for Faust, a Facebook page for uh, the Littlest Bitch. And the Littlest Bitch tweets in her own voice, um, and I'm developing this, like I said, the huge project for digital. So, I mean, I'm. Tales of Hot Rod Horror, which is another book I've got here on the table, that's available in iTunes. Um, you know, I'm looking for every way to reach um, what they call the long tail, you know, the niche that understands and gets and really appreciates this stuff and just has to have it. You know, um, you can find them. So, so uh, it's a double-edged sword, as you probably know, the internet. Um, there's tons of comics bootleggers out there, just like they're bootlegging the movies and the music. Um, they, they get so accustomed to get, being able to get stuff for free, they don't even realize they're actually taking money out of the pockets of the creative people. So it's one thing to want to disintermediate uh, a publishing company or, or a big corporation, but when, when you're stealing work online, you're actually stealing from the artist too, which is a shame. At the same time, it's a great tool and it's, it's great for uh, reaching new readers and finding your audience. You know, the littlest pitch is on Amazon. Amazon didn't exist when I started writing comics 25 years ago. Right. If it did, I, I don't, I'm not aware of it. I, I think they they certainly weren't outside of the realms of books and thus weren't that popular at the time, mm. uh, if they did exist, but I seriously doubt they did. Um, so, would you have any uh, advice to someone, uh, possibly a, a, a more established indie artist such as yourself, uh, in coming to Mocha? Uh, would you Would you recommend it? Look at everything. Don't be shy. Talk to people. Come say hi to me. Come ask me questions. Come take a flip through my books. Um, never be intimidated to talk to uh, someone on the other side of one of these tables. Trust me, we don't. You know. For the most part, I don't think anyone on this, in, in these tables thinks that they're anybody special. They're just a person who does what they do, and they came, they came here to see you, so talk to us. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, I, I know you said The Littlest Bitch uh, has kind of a reputation for being at MoCA, and, and this is your first instance of releasing Faust in such a, a major form, but did you have anything else that uh, you were promoting uh, in coming to MoCA this year? Uh, I mentioned Huge, I mentioned the Romeros, yeah. I mentioned yeah. Faust, I mentioned The Littlest Bitch. Uh, did I talk about Tales of Hot Rod Horror? Uh, no, you didn't. This is Tales of Hot Rod Horror, number two. I have a Mocha special. It's only eight bucks instead of the usual ten. Okay. Um, my collaborator on The Littlest Bitch, Devin Devereaux, an artist out of Portland, uh, drew the story that I wrote, and he published this through his Cackling Impress. It's all creator-owned stuff. Some of those people are actually quite famous in comics. Others are people that are just starting out and maybe you've never seen before. It's a great anthology, so I'm showing that off. Awesome. And we're hoping to do a book three soon. This uh, project was, this printing of this project was funded on Kickstarter, which is another whole business conversation we could have. Right. But crowdfunding is definitely here to stay. And this was a perfect crowdfunding type project because it was already all done. Yeah. When you 
have something with some a few names and some interesting incentives, and it's already all done, you're good to go. You should, you should consider crowdfunding. Right, and Kickstarter certainly, work for us. If, if you've shown like the ability to print work in the past and have released it, I think people are much more likely to, to fund you, and especially if you have like an established web presence. Like you say, you try to keep on top of things in terms of promoting yourself and your work. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it makes sense, actually. Crowdfunding is just a lot of people taking the small gamble on you instead yep. of a, a one company taking a huge gamble on you. That's Certainly. A good, that's a good way to listen to it. Thanks. Okay, uh, did you have any final words for someone who might be considering coming to MoCo or wanting to take a look at your work? Please come. We need more people, and this is the most eclectic and individual and fun comic show I know of in New York. So okay, well thank you very much.